Um, it started with my mother wearing flowers and father getting tired of the cleaning bills and bought her one. And she saw him off on embarkation leave and lost it. Uh, he never returned and basically ever since we've been trying to find the original. So this has been going on for about 40 years? Yes. Well, you've certainly brought along some extraordinary examples. Now, I, I suppose these are the creme de la creme of the collection. Oh, yes. They are, of course, Victorian posy holders, so that the Victorian young lady could carry her flowers without soiling her chamois leather gloves. This, I think, is a, a most remarkable one. It's gold, the most beautiful filigree work, and it's, I would imagine, Chinese, because the box is Chinese, and it does appear to be the original box. And this one, I would think, well, really, I suppose the period of all of them is around the 1860s to the 1880s. But the workmanship on that is really quite exquisite. They all have this pin through to hold the bouquet firmly in place. This is another gold one, set with semi-precious stones. The handle is a bloodstone, an amethyst at the base. Beautiful Victorian original case. And on the cover, the monogram of Queen Victoria. Regina et Imperatrice, oh, yes, yes. Royal Crown, made by Garrard's Crown Jewellers. That's a really beautiful one. Yes. This is another interesting thing. I think that. Uh, That's my favourite. Is it really? That's. Uh, ah. And it's got some little hallmarks on it here, which it's Russian. 56 standard, which I think roughly equates to 14 karat gold. I've never seen a Russian one before. It's the only one I've ever seen. And that's uh, a lot of fun, isn't it? Again in its original case, which is always very nice to see. And then this quite remarkable thing. I, I'm certain that this must be Indian because this filigree work is very typical and one can imagine some Indian bride smothered in this silver jewellery and carrying this bridal bouquet in imitation of the English style. And uh, does this do something interesting? Yes, you unscrew that. And there you have a holder so you can put it down and shake hands with your guests at the wedding reception. Uh, it's very difficult to place a value on these because one doesn't see them very often. I would estimate that the gold ones are probably worth around £2,000 each. And the silver ones, and the, mother, and the other ones that we have here, probably between £500 and £1,000 each. I can't even guess at this one. No. <laughs> but it's certainly a remarkable collection. And, uh, have to find somebody with small enough wrists. Yes. Are you going to keep adding to it? Hopefully, yes. I believe I bought it at a sale. I used to attend auction sales. Right. Well, it's a funny looking thing, isn't it? It is that, but I fell for it the moment I saw it. Well, I can't, I don't blame you. The thing is, we're actually looking at an object with a certain, a certain item missing from it. And when we put the item with it, it becomes self-explanatory oh, yeah. what we're looking at, isn't yes, it? Yes, quite. So let's do it. Here it is. Now. The only thing's missing now is probably a gallon of water and two or three goldfish. Right. Despite the fact that the children are Dutch, yeah. the object itself isn't. No. The object itself, believe it or not, was made com somewhere completely different. Yeah. And that would almost certainly have been Bohemia. Yeah. What we today call Czechoslovakia. Yes. So I would suspect that this was made in Bohemia, possibly Austria, at turn of the century, about 1900. Yes. Uh, and I think that would make sense because not only were they um, um, strong in their, in their, with their pottery, but they were even stronger with their glassworks. Yes. There were something like 300 glassworks in Bohemia at the right, turn of right. the century. I mean, they were producing a lot of glass. So I think that's is where the two came, came together. I, I thought it was a casting uh, in metal, gun metal or something like that. But a little chip came off yesterday morning yes. when I was cleaning. And I think it's plastic. You're absolutely right. It's a, it is an actual fact. Just a little tiny chip. It is, in fact, earthenware. Earthenware. You're absolutely right. But it is painted to simulate 
painted almost to simulate bronze. Yes. Uh, because in Austria at that time, they were making cold painted bronzes very, very similar. Might right. I point out the little feet? If you turn it round, you get a better view of them. Let's Everything's in detail. Yes. The little legs, the little bow, little thing. Well, there's certainly, little... there's certainly no, no expense no, been spared. No fingers off for anything. I think it's a marvellous thing. Right. And what did you say it was worth? I'd say anywhere around three, four, it may even make 500 pounds yes. plus. It's, it's anybody's guess. My wife doesn't want to sell it. I should hope not. <laughs> I should hope not. Well, I'm 88 and she's 84, right. so we want to hang on to it.